Good morning. We've got uh, quite a few chapters of Job to look at today, five through ten, three chapters from yesterday and three from today. And chapter five is a continuation of the first of Job's friends in talking to him, Eliphaz. And he, you know, he starts out, you know, and there is, you know, who are you going to call upon? Which of the holy ones you're going to call upon? None of them can help you, you know, and and stuff. And you, and and his reasoning is is an attempt to help Job figure out his sinfulness. What did you do wrong? I mean, and and you had to do something. And you know, the I've seen fools taking root, you know, and suddenly they're cursed. They're you know, in the hungry eat their harvest, and it, you know, it's, it's you know, he's trying to help Job figure out, well, what was it you did wrong? Giving him suggestions and ideas and whatever. And, and then verse 8, he says, As for me, I would seek God, and to, and to God I would commit my cause. He does great and unchangeable things. You know, and you know, so you know, Eliphaz is encouraging Job then to, to seek God and, and to, you know, to ask God, basically, well, what did I do wrong? Or you know, whatever it might be that way. And... And verse 17, happy is the one whom God reproves, you know, whom, and this is kind of the, you know, the punishment aspect, you know, that, you know, God is doing something against you that way. Chapter six, uh, we, we see the beginning of Job's um, response to, to Eliphaz. And, you know, oh, that my vexation was weighed and my calamity laid in the balance, you know, and, 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 but it's, you know, he's, He's just kind of going over that, you know, he, he can't figure out what he did, you know, and, and, um, and, and, and then again, starting in verse eight, you know, has just the kind of wish that, you know, he'd have never been born or that God would take him, take his life, that his life on earth would end, you know, and, and, um, but it, it just goes back to that. And then starting in verse 14, he kind of, uh, in a way, kind of scolds his friends, you know, for, um, and in in a way, almost refers to them as those who are against him, you know, rather than for him, strengthening him and encouraging him, you know. They're uh, so you know it's you know the frustration that they that Job has to have, and then you know the well-meaning friends are trying to help. And they're not doing any good, you know. As you know, this first one. I mean, it's a pretty lengthy speech. This, you know, from Eliphaz, basically the two chapters there, and and in in uh, and Job actually kind of addresses God in, in this as well. You know, God's name isn't mentioned much in this. You know, and and not at all by by you know the. Um, you know, it's to call upon God and everything that way, but uh, it's all about them. But God, but Job does, you know, kind of talk to God and addresses God in this situation. In verse 28, he says, Now be pleased to look at me, for I will not lie to your face. Turn, let me do no wrong. Show my vindication. Is there any wrong on my tongue? You know, and so Job is, you know, basically pleading his, his innocence and and his friends aren't hearing it. And um, in in verse seventeen of Job, it I don't know, you know, it, you know, who who what are human beings that you make so much of them and you set your mind on them, and this is very similar to to your know, Psalm eight, you know, what are mortals that you are aware of them, you know, what you know, more so than anything else, you know, and so we hear that uh, as well in there, and then in chapter eight. Uh, we have Bildad's first uh, speech, first attempt at at uh, talking to Job, and you know, and, and again, his his focus is basically you need to repent. You've done something wrong. You need to repent. You, and you know, and then um, you know, it, it's you need to repent, but also maybe some of this that you know, some of this that's coming bad at you is, is because of the sins of your children. But yet, you know, God has promised, you know, that he's not going to punish the fathers for the children. You know, the, you know, it says that, you know, the, you know, it kind of turns around the other way that, you know, children can be the third or fourth generation to those that do bad, you know, God says that way. But, um, anyway, Bildad's, 
encouragement to Job is to is to confess his sinfulness, to to repent. And Job again says, you know, basically, you know, he's saying, I I, I haven't done anything that, I, that that against God. And and to think about, you know, I mean, he, you know, he, to be blameless before God is is just such an awesome thing. But you know, it's the following of the laws, it's the keeping of the law, it's doing all of that. And and Job has been good in all that. And then. Starting in verse 11, Bildad uh, talks, you know, he uses the, the analogy of plants and how plants grow. Can papyrus grow where there is no marsh? You know, can can reeds flourish where there is no water? Uh, you know, and, and you know, so it's, you know, you, you can only grow in the place where you belong, you know, and, I, you know, we've got some water in our ditch, you know, in front of our house this year, and it's been nice grass for quite a few years, but... A few years ago, when it was really wet, we had cattails growing in the ditch of our yard. And where did those seeds come from? But, you know, so they need the right conditions. And if there's not enough washer, water or whatever, and this is what Bildad is saying, you know, um, basically pointing out that, you know, you, you just, sin's going to be within you. And, um, and it's, you know, he's not, it's not encouraging to Job at all, you know. Um, the wicked thrive before the sun, their shoots spread over the garden, their roots twine around the stone hemp, and they live among the rocks, you know, and, you know, it, and it is a, this is a reminder that, you know, sin and evil are all around, and, and they everything, and then verse 20, you know, Bildad says, God will not reject a blameless person, nor take the hand of an evildoer, you know, so they're looking at all of the calamities that have befallen Job as, uh, the Job is, has sinned. You know, he is no longer blameless before God. And for the Jews to be blameless before God, they, they, you know, they did, they observed the Passover, they observed the festivals, they, they did the, the, the ritual cleansings, and, you know, they were, by their sacrifices, then they could be this blameless before God. But, um, but it's, you know, the, the, the speech of these friends, they continue to to say to Job that you got to be guilty of something, that God is punishing you. And and Job continues to profess his innocence. And in verse 9 is the reply of Job to Bildad's first, you know, set of, I don't know if I want to use accusations, but, you know, in the encouragements to, to know that he's a sinner, to, you know, that way. And... And Job says, how can a mortal be just before God? If one wished to contend with him, he could not answer him once in a thousand. He's wise in heart, mighty in strength, who has resisted him. You know, he's talking about God. He, 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 he removes mountains and they don't know it. When he over, you know, and, you know, and that's, yeah, when God does something, if God was to destroy the mountains and, and flatten them out, the mountains wouldn't know anything about it because they haven't the ability to think or to reason or any of that, they, you know, they're a pile of rock and dirt, and and um, you know they can't move themselves. But you know, it, it, but he's giving God so much credit. He said, you know, who commands the sun, you know, and it does not rise? Who seals up the stars? Who stretches the heavens? Who tramples the waves of the sea? You know, he's in, acknowledging God's power, and God's might. And, and God's creation. Who made the bear and, and Orion, the Pleiades, and, you know, those things. So, um, you know, and it, it's, it's one of those realizations that, you know, the, the bear and Orion, and, and, you know, these are names of constellations in the sky that, you know, Job, all these centuries ago, knew and called them that. And... Then verse 14, how can I answer, choosing my words with him? Though I am innocent, I cannot answer. I must appeal for mercy to my accuser. You know, Job knows he's innocent. So he's appealing for mercy to his accuser. Well, who's his accuser? God hasn't accused him. God knows, you know, because because God lifted him up. And and we, we go back to the big chapters 1 and 2, you know, where... You know, God says, see my, see my servant Job and how faithful he is. And, you know, so God knows that Job is blameless before him. And, and Job talks of that. 
And, and in starting in verse 25 in chapter 9, Job says, My days are swifter than a runner. They flee, they see no good. They go by. He said, he's acknowledging my life in the scope of eternity is brief and fleeting. You know, I'm here for a short time and I'll be gone. You know, and, but yet again, you know, he's, uh, if I become afraid of all my suffering, I know you will not hold me innocent. You'll be, you know, if he, if he's done something bad, if he's done some sin, he knows that he won't be held innocent by God. And then again, verse 10, he, uh, he's addressing God. I loathe my life. I will give you free utterance to my, I will speak my bitterness. I will say, do not condemn me, you know, and he's just, he's, He's now here pleading with God in verse 14. If I sin, you watch me. You know, if I'm wicked, woe to me. But, you know, he he continues to know, to know and to trust that he is righteous with God. And it isn't because of any sin that he has done. And it's, you know, the the lament of Job and the encouragement of his friends to admit his guilt when, when Job isn't guilty of anything is, you know, it, uh, it, it's, it's difficult in many ways to totally understand everything that's going on here. But, but yet, w w from knowing the story of Job and knowing what's going on, we know that it wasn't because of any sin that Job did. We know that Job is faithful and trusting in God. And that's what God asks of us, to be faithful and trust in him. And may you do so today.